Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, multi-rail position play. Now what does that mean? That means you are making a shot and come off multiple rails to get position on another shot. I'm going to show you 10 examples here. If you have these 10 shots down pat, you are going to be able to make thousands of multi-rail shots. This is not a joke. If we are playing a multi-rail position shot, you have to keep in mind that not just the examples that I give you will get you in position, but everything along the way plus some will also get you in position. This shot is good even when there's traffic on the table if you understand the path that the cue ball is going to take. Here we're on the nine. We want to get on this eight. We're going to come off with three rails. We play this with high right hand English. We don't need a lot of speed. We're going to come down. We'll hit our third rail here, bounce off. We have a layup on the eight ball. Now, when I talk about multiple shots with the shots that I'm showing you today, let me give you an example. We have our nine ball and we had a situation that looked like this. Our eight ball could have been here, here, is there. We still get on the ball. We are on the nine ball. We need to get on the eight ball that is here. What can we do here? We could shoot a draw shot, come off of this rail and this rail with running English, bring our cue ball down here. Even if we hit this three, and by the way, we won't, but even if we were to hit this three, we would still get on this eight ball. This is a shot that works even when the table is crowded. You could throw another couple balls out here. It doesn't matter. We could put a ball here. We could put another ball here, it doesn't matter. If you know the path that your cue ball is going to take, then you can decide whether or not you can pull off this shot. So if we shoot this with low left hand English and a good stroke, guys, not everyone is gonna have this in their game. We come off of these rails, we come down here, we hit this rail, we pull up with the eight ball. Not only are you out, but your opponent is thinking, what the hell did I just get myself into? That is one of my favorites. Let's look at a simpler version of that that you are more likely to use. Okay, gang, this is a shot that I like to think of as the little sister of our previous shot. Once again, we're on the nine. We have some traffic on the table. We need to get to the eight ball. We're a little bit past the shot line on that nine ball. If you played with me before, a lot of you have, you know, that I love this shot. I'll take position on this shot sometimes just so I can come around the table and get on the eight ball here rather than come here and have to stun it down, avoid this pocket and all of that stuff. So how do we shoot this shot? For a lot of you, it's gonna be a lot easier than our previous shot where we had to shoot a very powerful draw shot with English. We're gonna shoot a nice follow shot with English this time. Follow through on it, guys. Running English, this is left hand English. Follow through on the shot, you come off with three rails and you come down here for a shot on this eight ball. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking or at least should be thinking. And that is, how do I know that I'm going to avoid this traffic and how do I know where I'm going to land once I get down here? There's two ways you're gonna learn it. One, by shooting it. I can tell from this angle, just by shooting thousands of these, that I'm going to miss this five ball and I'm gonna land much more on the inside for this eight ball. So the shot would look like this. We miss our five, we come down, we hit this rail this time as opposed to this rail and we're on our eight ball. Now, why do I know this? Because if my cue ball the tangent line on the shot is going to take me higher there, closer to this pocket, come back lower here, which means that it's going to come inside as opposed to outside. A lot to think about, right? That's step one to learning this. Step two, and the thing that you guys should be doing, and the reason that I know all of these angles without doing any math or anything special, is when I was a kid, this was my favorite trick shot. Just shooting balls around the table and coming back to this pocket. 
If you do that, along with shooting these balls in the side pocket and some of the other shots that I'm showing you, you will get a feel for it. You won't have to consciously think, I'm going higher there, lower here, ending up here. If you Here's a shot that I also showed you guys in previous videos. It is a pretty dynamic shot and it is a very useful shot. Here, we're on the three. We're gonna take this in terms of a nine ball rack. We're on the three, we need to get on the five. So those of you eight ball players that are thinking five to three combination, not only would I not play it that way, but this way is gonna give you a lot more control. And keep in mind, no matter what happens, I need to get on this six ball ultimately. So we play our three ball with high right hand English. We're gonna come off of one, two, three rails, and guess what? Even if we hit a fourth rail, we're still gonna be on that five. That's what I like about this shot. So if you have this situation, and you're probably not gonna have the exact thing where the balls are touching the rail, but if you have this situation, don't undershoot it. You want to overshoot it. Because if I end up here, that's okay, but if I end up here, then I'm that guy that played bad position and now has to bank the five ball. So if I play this with high right hand English and a nice stroke, I can come off of three rails, I'm going to get on that five ball, and guess what this five ball does? It puts me on the six with the exact same shot. This time, my cue ball is gonna land up here, a much tighter spot, but I will still have a makeable shot on the six ball. And now, we come down, we have a makeable shot on the six. We are out. That configuration comes up more than you realize, okay? You're not gonna have the balls on the rail like that. They're not gonna be uniformed and all of that stuff. But if you have that shot, think about the first shot. I could have stopped that cue ball anywhere along the way. I could have hit it harder and got down here on this six. There's a lot of things you can do when you have these shots in the bag. If you have the stroke, you should get this in your game. Probably not as difficult as it will look to some of you, but give it a try. We're on the five and we want to get on the eight. A lot of people will try to go up and back. So they're trying to come off of this rail and come down here. You can see that all our traffic is in the way. Even if we could go forward, we still have traffic in the way. What we're going to do here is come off of these two rails, head down here, come off of that rail, and anything but behind this 10 ball, which we're gonna avoid just by putting the right amount of speed on it, anything but behind this 10 ball is gonna put us on our eight, which is right here. So the shot looks like this. This is low right hand English, good follow through guys. We come down here and we avoid this 10 ball. We get nice position on this eight ball, and this is a layup every day of the week. As I've already said a half dozen times during this video, if you have these shots, you've got a lot of variations of these shots. So here I have a very similar situation. You can see I just kind of threw it out there randomly, but we have the same concept in play, except this time our eight ball is here on the rail instead of here. I do this to show you that I can use the same shot to get position on a ball that's here whether it's here or here. So let's think of this as our eight ball and that as our eight ball. We shoot this shot, low right hand English. We come off of those rails, except this time with enough pace to come off of this rail. So our shot looks like this. We hit our final rail. We drop right between these two balls. And guess what? Whether our eight was here or here, it's makeable. That's all you need to do. Just add some speed to a similar shot. Use your imagination, use your creativity, and you've got dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of shots just by having these shots. Let's look at a couple easy ones that everybody has got to have in their game. A lot of old school players will tell you that one of the worst things that can happen to an amateur player is a pocket hanger. Why? Because they tend to play them incorrectly. What does that mean? We can't see the five here. We're playing eight ball. We have the seven. We need to get to the eight ultimately. We need to play that five. Here's your amateur player. Shoots the five after shooting the seven, but shoots it from here. This is no good, guys. Yes, the advanced player, some of the intermediate players can get to this eight ball 
from that thigh ball. We could go inside, bring it down here. We could do a lot of things. Some of you are thinking, I'm going rail first and coming off of this rail. Everyone who had that thought, every single one of you, yes, I can read your mind. Every single one of you who had that rail first thought has at some point in your life gone rail first and missed that ball altogether. That is not the shot. You do not want to come off of here and then here to play this five. So what should you be doing? When you have this situation, don't stop your cue ball out in space. Send it to this rail. I don't care if you send it to this side or this side of the side pocket, depending on where you are on this shot. Even if you're straight, now I put it exactly straight in. I am going to come as close to that pocket as I can without scratching. Okay, now you come off the ball first with high left hand English. Every APA three can shoot this shot with 20 seconds of coaching. High left hand English, bring it off of these rails, medium speed, pretend you can't scratch here. Don't even think about scratching. Because you got close to this rail, you're gonna, you're gonna have a path that looks like this. You'll come down here, you're gonna have a shot on the eight ball. Unless you have so much traffic that you end up behind another ball or you get extremely unlucky and end up in this pocket, you're gonna be out every time. Stop playing your hangers from the middle of the table. This is not where you wanna be. So what has changed? This time, our eight is not over here, it's over here. This time, if we get along this rail and we shoot off of three rails, we're gonna come down and we're not gonna have a shot on this eight. We could power it and try to come off of this rail and bounce out here. Still, not the best shot. What we wanna do this time, you're gonna to have to give this a little bit of thought sometimes in the heat of battle. Instead of getting close to this rail, we wanna get close to that rail. Well, how do we do that? Well, we play position to get close to this rail. So if I play this, just a little bit of follow here. No English or anything. I'm just trying to get as close to this rail as I can. Watch what happens with my eight ball shot. Once again, APA three. Just hit it there, Bobby. Okay, Bobby hits it, he comes down here. He is on the eight ball. I can't get him any better on this. Now, Bobby could have overhit it and got over here, but he's probably not going to see this exact configuration. And before he had no way to get down here on this eight ball. Sorry, Bobby, um, for using your name in the example. <laughs> Let's look at a couple easy variations of some of these shots that you can use right away, regardless of your level. Remember the shot we did earlier, cue balls here. We had to get the ball in the side, come off of those two rails and come down here to play the eight ball. Here we have a similar situation, but it's set up in a way that just about all of you can make this. If you just play this shot with high left hand English and you let the cue ball come off of these rails, you can get down table for this eight ball. So think these things through because some of these shots that you see that you're making a lot more difficult than they need to be are a lot simpler than you might think they are. I've shown you some tough ones, I've shown you some easy ones, but it wouldn't be FX Billiards without the exotic ones, right? So what do we do? We are on our eight ball after playing the five in the side. We've got a lot of traffic over there, guys. I can't tell you for sure that if you play this in the side pocket, let's say from here, you're not going to run into this traffic if you try to go high left like we did before. What if we go high right? Ultimately come off of this rail and pull up for the eight here. This falls into the exotic group, guys. This has got reverse English on it. We come down here, we hit this rail, and guess where we pull up? Right over here for this eight ball. Very nice. We don't hit that 13, guess what? We get even straighter on it. Inside English, we come off of these rails. We still have all of that spin on there. Some of you are gonna tell me, I tried that shot, Brian, it didn't work. I hear it all the time. Well, you gotta let your stroke out. You've got to have a lot of backspin on that ball. When I talk about backspin, I'm not talking about draw shot. I'm talking about reverse English. So when it hits this rail, it still has enough spin on it 
to come off of that rail, this rail, hit this rail, still carrying that spin when you come over here. Mess around with that, try it at different angles, but that also is a spirit breaker. Similar variation of the same shot. Our eight ball is here. High right hand English, a lot of spin on this guys. Come down here, we pull up. Same shot, it is the same shot. We just took a bunch of speed off of it. Here's a shot that a lot of you guys have trouble with. And how do I know you have trouble with it? Because every week somebody asks me about this shot. We are on the five ball. If we are straight in on this, we have trouble getting on that eight ball. If we are over here, we have trouble getting on that eight ball. If we're over here on this side of the shot line, we could actually shoot a little bit of draw and get on that eight ball. But if we are just a little to the right hand side of the shot line, we want a shot that looks like this. This is high right hand English. I'm gonna make the five, hit this rail with so much right hand spin that it's not going to go this way, which it naturally wants to go. It's gonna come over here and line up with this eight. So the shot looks like this. The reverse English brings it back here. Now, why do you guys have trouble with this? First off, don't blame your equipment, okay? You can shoot that same shot, I don't care what kind of cloth you're playing on, you can shoot the same shot. The other problem that you guys have, or the other real problem that you might have, is you're trying to do it in a fashion where it's just impossible. If you have this angle that looks like this, there's not enough right hand English in the world because your cue ball is going to hit the rail here. And if you manage to bring it back over here, you're very special. So that's another problem. The next problem and the most realistic problem that a lot of you are having is you have to have so much right hand spin on this ball that when it hits this rail, that spin has not scrubbed off. You have to have the same kind of stroke that you would be shooting a long draw shot with. If you don't have a good fluid stroke that is accelerating when you hit this ball, that has a light grip and good follow through, you're never gonna be able to pull it off. So if you're having trouble with this shot, make sure you're working with a realistic angle. Make sure you are working on that stroke. It is a high right hand force follow and you just have to build up to your ability to make that shot. It takes an awful lot of energy to come off of this rail and reverse directions. Hit me in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Show me in the comments which of these shots was your favorite. I numbered them so that you could list which one is your favorite and which one you're more likely to use or you've been using in the past. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.